There are basically two kinds of happiness. The happiness that comes from the things we gain from outside or take from outside. And then the happiness that comes from developing our inner resources. The first kind of happiness is very undependable. Because often there's very little outside for us to take. And in the taking, it develops qualities of mind that are really uncomfortable. Especially if you see that when we take something, somebody else has to lose. This is why the Buddha recommended the second kind of happiness, the happiness that comes from developing our inner resources. You may ask yourself, well, what kind of resources do you have? There's more there than you might think. And that's one of the major discoveries of the practice, is you really do have more potential than you imagine. This is one of the reasons why we listen to the, the Buddha's teachings. It's to stretch our imagination. Help us understand that we have more energy inside, more potentials inside, than we would have thought otherwise. And there are three main ways of developing these potentials, through generosity, virtue, and developing goodwill. Because in each case we find that we have to take something we have inside. and develop it further. And in doing so, we gain inner strength. And that inner strength, that sense that we can depend on ourselves and we have something inside that we didn't have to take from anyone else, but it's there, that creates a great sense of well-being. And these are the areas in life where we can develop these inner resources as part of augmenting our meditation. Because the meditation is going to take this principle and carry it really far. In the beginning, we require these three kinds of training. Training in generosity, virtue, and developing goodwill. With generosity, it's a matter of realizing that we have more than enough. The mind state that says, I don't have enough, I need to take something from outside, that's creating hunger right there, creating weakness right there. And that in and of itself causes stress and suffering. But when you realize that you have more than enough in certain areas, and there are other people who might benefit from sharing it, from your sharing it with them, that creates a sense of wealth. And it's a sense of wealth that even poor people have, because it's not just a matter of giving things. There's the gift of your knowledge, the gift of your time the gift of your forgiveness. In other words, making up your mind that you're not going to look for revenge for the ways that people have wronged you. In each case, as you make this gift, you're placing yourself on a higher level. You have more than enough. You have the strengths inside that allow you to do without certain things, or do without thoughts of revenge, or do without being stingy. You have, you have knowledge that you can share. One of the nice things about this way of finding happiness is that instead of creating boundaries, which happens when you look for your happiness in material gain or status, this kind of happiness erases boundaries. As you see, that person benefits, you benefit, and the more they're happy about it, the more happier you feel as well. This creates a really good feeling in the mind, and you find that you can feed on that feeling and it gives you strength. Virtue is also a kind of gift. You realize that you can restrain. <coughs> You're less skillful impulses, and you can re refrain from harming other people. You give them safety. And in giving them safety, as the Buddha says, you gain a share in that safety as well. You create a world around you in which there's less harm being done. You create a world in which truthful, <coughs> truthful words are being spoken.
people act in honest, reliable ways. Even if it's only you acting in the reliable way, and if you, even if you're the only person speaking the truth, at least you're creating a new atmosphere around yourself, a new environment around yourself. And you find that you attract a different kind of person. You've been living with people who lie a lot. You find that they don't like being lie around you anymore when you're telling the truth. People who tell the truth will be more attracted to you. And so you begin to realize that the environment around you comes from within you to a huge extent. All too often we allow ourselves to be the victim of outside circumstances. But again, that's weakening yourself and it creates a vicious cycle. But if you can find the strength to refrain from harming others, and it does take a certain amount of restraint and forbearance and endurance. You discover that in exercising those strengths, they become more and more reliable. The same principle applies with goodwill. There may be a lot of people out there who wish you ill. But it's not going to help the world for you to wish them ill in return. We can't wait for everybody to be loving and benevolent with one another before we're willing to be loving and benevolent, because if everybody's waiting for everybody else, it's never going to happen. But if you can look within yourself and realize that there's a part of your mind that really flourishes when you're wishing for the happiness of others, for the happiness of yourself. You realize that you gain strength. You've got a source of energy in here that you can develop. If you start feeling ill will, that just damages that strength. And again, it creates a really nasty, vicious cycle. So you decide that what, regardless of what other people say to you or do to you, you're not going to let that color your attitude that you wish everybody to be happy. You maintain that attitude. It doesn't mean that you have to like other people, but it simply means that you, you are happiness. You are happy when you see the happiness of others, because that's one of the ways in which your inner strength gets developed is you learn how to feed off of other people's happiness in a healthy way. You're not taking their happiness away. You're augmenting their happiness, and as you do that, you gain greater happiness as well. You're the opposite of that anger-eating demon that appears in one of the suttas, where the more people yell at it, the bigger it gets and the stronger it gets. So Saka, the king of the Devas, realizes what this is. It's an anger-eating anger demon. So he goes in and he pays respect to it. And the more he bows down, the more he's respectful, the anger eating demon just shrivels up, shrivels up, and finally disappears. So the same principle applies in our lives. If we feel a lot of ill will for other people, that feeds the ill will in, in, in them. And things just get worse and worse. So they may be showing ill will to you, but that doesn't mean that you have to respond in kind. You look for the strength of goodwill within you, and you find that it'll change the situation. At the very least, you know that you haven't behaved in a way that's unskillful. You haven't behaved in a way that's harmful. And the goodwill itself is one of the strengths that enables your generosity and your virtue to continue developing even further. So all three of these ways of finding inner strength, finding happiness within, are mutually reinforcing. And when you allow yourself to stretch your imagination, to realize you have these sources of strength within you, even when it seems like they're not to be found, just work on the assumption they're there. And that opens the possibility for them to show themselves and to grow. In doing this, you create a sense of well-being, you create a sense of fullness and wealth. 
is you know that you're not hungering for other people's approval or hungering for other people's things or hungering to get back at people. Because that kind of hunger leads you to feed on all kinds of unhealthy food that makes you even weaker. And just the fact of being hungry, that in and of itself, the Buddha said, is the greatest, the greatest disease, the worst disease, because it's constant. But when you can stop making yourself hungry and realize you've got sources of strength within, And you can express that. Sometimes you have to express it outside before you feel it inside. But when you develop this habit of being generous, being virtuous in the sense of refraining from harming from other people, and learning to think thoughts of goodwill, it will call up the strength that you need. So instead of finding happiness from being hungry and then trying to take something and stuff it into that big hole of our hunger, we find happiness in being strong. Even when we look around and there doesn't seem to be any strength around, act on the assumption that it's there and you'll find that you call it into being. So this is a happiness that comes from fullness. The happiness that comes from a sense of wealth. And when you begin to understand this dynamic of happiness, that really reinforces your meditation. Several of the Thai Johns have said that it's when you reach the end of the path, you look back and you realize it was the same practice all the way through. The attitude that starts with generosity. Looking, in your side, looking inside yourself to find the strength so you might not have noticed at first, and being willing to share them. That's the basic dynamic of the entire path.